Today, the Google Lunar X Prize ignites our imagination, allows us all to participate, and challenges private enterprise to take us back to the moon. And this time, we're planning to stay. Moon 2.0, join the revolution. Here I am at the Wired Fest. We just heard the most amazing announcement, the XPRIZE Foundation, Google, everybody coming together. What do you think about all this? Well, I uh, have known that it was in the offing for a while, um, and I think it is being going to be well received by the public to be able to see some, uh, some action and some competition toward a, a very, very ambitious prize for uh, a, a, a rocket launch into orbit and then leaving orbit heading for the moon and then landing on the moon and then doing something when you get there. Much of the lunar soil is silicon, the key ingredient in solar cells. In the future, the silicon could be mined and used to build huge solar power satellites. These satellites could be deployed to capture clean solar energy for the Earth, each one capable of powering a large city. My background, just so you know, I have a PhD in engineering from UCLA, metallurgist, material scientist, and I have been a long admirer of you. And mm -hmm. <laughs> I, I'm really, really amazed and really honored to be able to talk to you and, and to hear a little bit more. What would, what's your passion? Why did you get into science? I had a challenging general science uh, teacher, I guess in middle school maybe. Um, I, my, uh, my objective was uh, aviation. And uh, that's what drove me in the realization that probably after being a teen teenager observing the uh, impact of World War II, it looked like the military was the best way to get into uh, aviation. So uh, I elected to go to the military academy at West Point. And the timing was such that uh, after training, I ended up in uh, combat for six months during the Korean War. Uh, that was rather challenging. I just came back from uh, uh, visiting Korea with uh, a double ace and two uh, other Korean aces. Uh, the war didn't last long enough. I only got two shot down um, um, and would have been um, quite anxious to uh, have increased that uh, had, had the conflict kept going. But we're quite pleased that it did cease because the Koreans uh, Probably both sides lost over a million people during that conflict, uh, and we lost 30, 37,000, and had POWs in China, some of them uh, probably taken to Russia, uh, and we've never heard from them uh, since then. So it sounds to me like your passion is really flight and really changing the world. Well, I found that by looking at the big picture, that the big picture uh, as to what I could do in professional education, and not just as a uh, stick and rudder guy in an airplane, was uh, to uh, look at innovation uh, and, and to look into the future. What do we need to be able to do? Um, so that's why I chose rendezvous in space um, before John Glenn had really ever flown in orbit for the U.S. <clears throat> so uh, a very wise decision is stood me in very good stead because I was able to expand that. Uh, and really, really expand it. Well, into strategies for better ways of, of uh, getting to Mars through Aldrin orbits of cycling spacecraft. And so I look at improving our lander strategy. Um, and, and then what can I do to help bring more and more people to understand what's going on and uh, sharing space through my uh, foundation in uh, lottery-like uh, awards of adventure awards, um, education enhancement, and uh, uh, reunion observances. 
I think one of the most interesting things that you said was the whole idea of inspiring and being able to do innovation. And so what do you think is key? Like I know that a lot of kids are here today. What do you think is going to inspire them to go to the moon? Uh, seeing other people uh, do it and seeing uh, the, the nation serious about exploration back in that direction. Uh, we're not the only ones uh, with the Russians. The Russians have announced uh, a, a time frame of 2025 when they'd like to uh, uh, reach the moon and, and to build up a permanent base to make use of the resources there, to have a polar orbiting space station. Um, uh, and then they put a target date of 2035 as uh, uh, the op op opportunity to reach Mars. Um, I think Mars is our ultimate for the, for the next century uh, uh, ultimate objective to establish permanence there and to be careful about not getting bogged down in intermediate uh, objectives that uh, uh, kind of sap away our resources. What was your most memorable event or, or you know, thing that happened to you? Well, being able to successfully uh, execute spacewalks in the Gemini program and then the uh, moment of uh, shutting off the engine and safely landing uh, on the surface of the moon, uh, they stand out as... Uh, Did you give out a little Yahoo? No, we're pretty serious about uh, what, what we had to do, uh, and that's get ready to leave in case something was leaking. Um, so uh, we kind of smiled at each other, and I patted Neil on the shoulder, and then, then off, to, uh, off to what comes next. Thank you so much. I really appreciate your time, and you're quite an inspiration. Thank you. It's one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind.